what we are today is we're a private label processor for mid to large size retailers. When a customer goes into a store and buys a package of meat, that's how it looks when it leaves our plant. We do items that retailers find challenging to produce consistently, and uh, we do it in our plant here. So we're pretty much from Michigan to Florida, all the way to the East Coast. There were four pictures that I sent. One was the kind of the old plant that was built in 65. And I showed some of the pictures of, you know, the, the carcass handling. That's kind of what we did early on. And we primarily focused just in West Michigan there. And then in the 90s, when we started to make some of those packaging changes, you'll see our footprint expanded to the state of Michigan. We did all the Glens markets upstairs and all, up, up north and all the D&W stores here. And working with those guys as partners, it was really good because I had that one-on-one -on -one relationship right with the retailer and they, they wanted us to be as successful as they could be. Every five years, we changed something pretty dramatic that we were doing from 1990 to 2020. I'll be very honest with you, there's a lot of times when I go out and talk to our employees and I, you know, I tell them about the changes that are coming and the maybe new customers and, and some of the challenges that, that come with that. that, that Everybody wants it because when you go private label, the customer dictates a lot of how they want their product to look. And sometimes that's very frustrating. And But when you're talking with our people, I'll go out there and, you know, just, this is great. This is going to be good. We're going to learn a lot with this. And then I come back in, I shut my door in my office and down and say, why does everything have to keep changing? You know, um, but I think when you really learn to embrace that and um, it, it it's not a, it's not a roadblock, it, it's more of an obstacle. And I think if they look at it as obstacles to get over, you just get over them and keep going. It's LED lighting. They're all designed and engineered specific to the automation industry. They can be used in lots of different types of applications from looking for defects in manufacturing products on an assembly line or looking for date codes, lot codes, reading barcodes. Another application would be a large company that ships lots of lots of products all over the world. You just go onto their website and buy things and they print a barcode and they slap it on a box and you get your product a day or two later. Our lights are attached to cameras that are reading those barcodes and we're just illuminating those barcodes for those cameras. What the light does, imagine a, a candy bar company is manufacturing all kinds of different candy bars. Some of those candy bars have nuts in them and some of those candy bars do not have light, nuts in them. Uh, there are specific wavelengths of LED lights that can actually act almost like x-ray. So it can see through a package and it can, it can identify candy bar once inside the package, whether or not it has peanuts inside of it or not. Well, we are a global company. Uh, we've got about 80 active distributors all over the world. And the company was founded in 2007, and uh, we have now about 65 employees. We're a company that is on a roll. We're in the right industry at the right time. Automation is very busy as people are harder to find for jobs these days, especially on the factory floor. Our lights help with the factory automation on the floor so that robots can be used and automation can be used to do those jobs that people don't want to do anymore and maybe aren't safe to do anymore. Well, I think with the size of our company, you're going to get a lot more attention than you would with a big company. We really value the relationship, and with us, we're going to make sure you're successful. We're going to do what it takes, and because of our small size, we can be pretty nimble, and we all are engaged, we all wear many hats, and we make sure that the customer is treated the way they would expect to be treated. We're a customer too. We have suppliers to us, and we want nothing more than to have suppliers that we call them up and they handle it and they take care of it and that's the way we try to treat our customers that meet their expectations, exceed their expectations and at the end of the day we should be a worry-free option for them. They should be able to come to us and award us work and just think 
Silver Creek is just the greatest company. We don't have to deal with them. We don't have to babysit them. We don't have to hold their hand. They give us no problems. They're one of our best, best suppliers, and that's what we strive to be every day. Well, we've got some customers that they, they can do the same capabilities that we have, but when they get in a bind, if they've got a press that goes down. So one of our customers is Bradford White. They make water heaters. They can do stamping in-house and they can do a lot of things, but when their presses go down or they have an issue, they ship it over to us. And like overnight, we, we're up and running, making parts for them and keeping up with their production. And their volumes are huge. They do like over 2,200,000 water heaters a year. So when they, when they need parts, they need a lot of them and they need them right away. And so that's one of the services they can rely on us. Call us up, hey, we know this isn't scheduled, it's not ready for you, but we need you to to dive in and get this work done for us and we'll do whatever it takes to, to help them out in their crunch time when they've got a problem. Lauren Industries is a family company that was started by my grandfather in 1943, and it's a capital-intensive business. We're producing products on these huge machines that are inline machines, starting with a raw coil, finished with an anodized coil, of lots of different colors and finishes that go out to many, many markets in many countries. We're serving a lot of different industries, including the biggest being building and construction. A lot of different applications that see the value of anodized and they're looking for something unique. The metallic look is pretty special with anodized aluminum because what we're doing is we're growing an oxide layer on the surface of the aluminum. It's not a coating, we're growing it. It's an electrochemical process. In nature, aluminum will turn a powdery white and you lose that metallic look. Well, with anodizing, we're oxidizing it, we're rusting it in a controlled fashion to produce a thin oxide layer that's translucent so you get to see the qualities and the properties of the aluminum through the anodized layer and enjoy it because once that oxidation layer is there, it's permanent. Architects are artists and so they have a design in mind, they have a, a look in mind that suits their design. And so the challenge for us is to innovate, to meet their needs and, and really exceed their needs if we can. We're always looking for ways to bring something to the architect that means more to them than what they originally thought it would. It's a signature of themselves. Their design is a signature of who they are. And so we wanna help them make it spectacular. Roller Products has been in existence for almost 40 years, was started by two partners, you know, that long ago as a screw machine shop, which back in the day that was high automation, multiple spindles, multiple machines. The shop was full of those machines making thousands and thousands of parts for multiple industries as fast as they could go, kind of in the heyday of manufacturing in North America. And gradually that work went away, went overseas, uh, faster automation took its place. And when I acquired Rollar almost seven years ago, there were still five of those 
uh, screw machines still left in the building, still making parts. When the company was sold, the old owner had come out to the manufacturing floor and said, hey, I think we sold the company last night. Well, to the four employees that were there, they went, uh-oh, that's not good. It's going to be sold. It's going to be liquidated, shut down, whatever that was. And our now plant manager had just signed papers to buy a new house the night before. So he was really in a panic. So one of the things I did even before I closed the sale of that company was to sit down with every employee and made sure they knew that them staying was the most important thing to me buying that company. Because I told them anybody can go buy this room full of equipment, put it in an open building and have what we have, but without dedicated people who care about what they do and want to be there and want to help, you're never going to make any money at it. So that's really the investment that we've made in, you know, humans. And I think that's really the key to the growth, their approach to our customers and customer service. So our belief in them carries over to how they treat our customers. And we always make the customer happy first and ask questions later. Eagle Alloy was started back in 1979. We are a steel manufacturer. We produce steel castings. Uh, we produce about 150 different alloys that cover low carbon steel, stainless steels, nickel based alloys, and alloy steels for a wide variety of about 20 different industries. We recycle everything from our sand that we use to make our molds, to make our castings, even our metal that comes off of our castings that we are using to produce them, we actually recycle all of that. But we're about six miles away from the Muskegon County landfill, so we actually pipe what the county used to burn off, we pipe into our facilities and use it to heat treat our castings. Well, back in the day, a lot of the stuff was trial and error. Nowadays, with the benefit of computer-aided design or CAD, we can actually build a virtual casting inside of our computer and then take that casting over to an FEA or finite element analysis program, which we call MagmaSoft. It is a predictive engineering software program that actually takes the casting and breaks it up into several million cells. And then we track our pouring process. So when we input 3000 degree heat and it cool down to room temperature. What is the solidification, the shrinkage look like? What is the heat degradation or the heat loss happen? What is the chemical analysis do? What is the bending, warping, distortion? We're going from a superheated 3000 degree state down to a room temperature. That happens in the matter of about two hours, maybe three. So it is a very quick process, but there is a bunch of preventative engineering that we do within that period that ensures our casting success to ensure we make our customers happy. I'm talking about. Yeah. I wish I could do this for money. Yeah, but what are you really gonna do? Because this is just for now. Are you going to state? No, I've got alternatives. Yeah, alternatives. You think you know so much. I might stay right here and get a good job. How are you gonna do that? In manufacturing, right here. I can train here, stay with my family, keep my friends, spend less money, and spend my weekends at the beach. Or fishing. Check this out. Where are we now? In the most advanced aerospace manufacturing facility in the world. Every plane in the free world flies with parts made right here in Muskegon County. Manufacturing today is skilled. And fills places like this with highly trained workers who make extremely technical parts for military jets. If you're interested in 3D printing, a career in manufacturing might be for you. What is this? It's a laser scanner, checking the quality of this axle box that holds up commuter trains around the world. Today's manufacturing skills are grounded in technology. 
Training in lasers and robots are just some of the exciting opportunities to be discovered when you prepare for a career in manufacturing. Modern manufacturing is amazingly clean and environmentally friendly. That's not what my father thinks. This plant in Muskegon makes the most energy efficient gas pumps in the world. More than 12 million Americans are gainfully employed in surroundings just like this. But what about right here? The demand for these jobs is right here, and the need for them is only going to increase. Manufacturing in Muskegon comes in a variety of forms, where the burgers fly on their way to the table. With a local apprenticeship and the learning and money that comes with it, I could be saving to buy a house before I could graduate from state. Where are all these jobs? Full or partial tuition is available to get the skills you need for over 1,000 jobs right here in Muskegon. Ask your career specialist how to get started. When you're in a plane and it goes like that, that power was made in Whitehall. So I might just stay right here and build my future where I can keep my friends. Enjoy the beautiful woods and water. And start a job I can build on for my family. I had, I had no, no idea. idea. And here it comes.